Hi, my golden friend. Today, Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana played against each other in Tata Steel Tournament. And Magnus played very nice positional game. He sacrificed exchange to gain positional advantage. And I want to take you to that moment as well as two critical points in the game. One moment that Fabiano made a mistake. Another moment that I want to show you Opposite colored bishops are not necessarily ending in the row and this is the case in this game even though the game didn't go to that direction but Fabi had a chance to take it to opposite color bishops but it wasn't solving his problems. Let's go forward and see what happened in the game. This is a Sicilian Rosolimo variation. Some people call it Nejmitino for Rosolimo, whatever. And the idea of Rosolimo, there are two main ideas. Uh, the very main idea is to destroy black's uh, pawn structure. For example, bishop takes knight and destroys the pawn structure. But in this game, Fabiano didn't go for that line. Instead, went for a second idea to gain a space, pushing pawns forward and gaining a space. And this is a very nice space advantage for white. But of course, when you have a space advantage, it means that you push your pawns too far and you should be very careful to not lose them. Because uh, just exchanging pawns is not beneficial for you. You may lose them all. Because the base of pawn structure will be a bit weak. So let's go forward and see uh, what's the outcome of opening. As usual, I don't stress too much on opening. But uh, just the outcome of opening is important for me. And here is basically end of the opening. And... Um, as you can see, the pawn structure of white is very nice. Three uh, pawn towards pointing towards uh, black's king, and c3, d4, and e5. But of course, the base of this pawn chain is a bit weak and should be defended strongly, or should uh, change the structure of pawns. Okay, goes backward with the queen and goes back with the bishop here at this moment you may say that why magnus didn't take this pawn if fabiano takes takes back right didn't magnus blunder a pawn not actually because uh, right after taking this pawn fabiano simply takes the knight if you take the bishop takes your queen so this is why the queen went back instead of Instead of taking the pawn, now there is a threat of taking the pawn. So Fabiano retreat the bishop and knight attacks the bishop, not just attacking the bishop, but also attacking the c pawn by rook. So rook defends the c pawn, takes takes, and now Magnus plays a little bit slow and Fabiano plays best move. Queen a2. The idea is to push the c pawn to c4 and make your pawn structure even stronger because you will eventually if um, black exchange the d pawn with your c pawn then you have a dream pawn structure if it doesn't exchange you have even more space so let's go what happens here is the first strange move of Fobby. queen a3 what i mean you may think now you may think that it attacks the E2, uh, e7 pawn but of course it's very stupid to attack that pawn i mean that pawn can be defended even if you win it it's not a big deal you will lose the b pawn and you will let the black to have a passed pawn and i mean the best move here was just simply to push i mean the uh, the whole idea of phobia i was thinking queen a2 means that he wants to push to c4 and here, black cannot take this pawn because then the pawn structure of white is just too uh, good, too good to be real. So, but of course, um, uh, this is not what happened in the game. He played simply queen a3, a strange, Magnus defends the e pawn and only then pushes the pawn. There is a big difference right now and a move before. Uh, if, if queen was on a2 
and pushing the pawn to c4 he could defend the c4 square with queen but no nothing defends that square except the rook and the pawn structure is weaker and you lost the tempo so for that reason he didn't want to retreat the queen back to a2 he just pushed the pawn it still is okay but no, much weaker than before i mean if the pawn was on c4 the other pawn was on d5 it was much much better it was a dream structure but of course it's not that case and it's a bit weak it still is good but let's go forward and see some more moves and uh, reach the critical moment of the game here the base of pawn chain of Fabi is very weak is the d4 pawn and you have a lot of a space but once you lose this pawn you lose the entire space but of course it's not easy for magnus to grab this pawn so attacks the knight why i am saying attacking this, the knight because Fabi simply ignores this attack and magnus takes the base of the pawns this is a big blunder by Fabi, i believe big at least positional blunder now pawn structure of white is destroyed and yeah here is the exchange sacrifice black wins the knight but and a pawn but loses a rook and um Fabi plays some good moves and some bad moves uh, before i continue let me tell you one thing at this position what is good here for Fabi? Nothing. Who is playing for Win, Fabi, or Magnus? Just uh, to understand, to understand why rooks are not as good as two bishops in this case. Notice that Black has at least one passed pawn. The A pawn is a passed pawn, and no way no, White can win it, even if he tries to give back exchange sack. Magnus can simply defend it with rook and bishop and later with queen and it's um, very very difficult to win that pawn so black has something to stress in the game and push forward and uh, make uh, play annoying for white against white but what about white does white have anything any way to penetrate in black, black camp not really rooks cannot go in everywhere is closed either by pawns or bishops you cannot push any pawn uh, your opponent structure is weak pushing any pawn is making you just weaker you have one good piece uh, the queen maybe if magnus plays bad at some point your queen can um, create some counterplay and here at this position Fabi uh, offers queen exchange offers to exchanging best piece he has for one of the okay pieces of non-black all pieces of black are good but in particular black's bishops are very good because they are just um, attacking or everywhere and controlling everywhere for example black's black squared bishop attacking the e pawn if e pawn falls white has nothing to play against uh, to play with and um, white square of um, uh, white square bishop of black is defending all his uh, queen side pawns so the queen was doing not much so no, simply magnus accepts the uh, exchange offer and now we enter the territory that we have two bishop against two, uh, rook and bishop so also one more mistake that Fabi made i believe is that took with the bishop taking with the rook maybe was better but anyway he took with the bishop and gave up the e pawn easily he did then resist and right now the position is very bad for black uh, for white sorry black has two pawns and one of them uh, two extra pawns and one of them is pass pawn the other one two other pawns are semi pass pawns White also, of course, has one semi-pass pawn. C pawn is semi-pass pawn, but <laughs> no way it can go forward because bishop located that pawn very strongly. And yeah, uh, only the only one who fights for a win is black. The game continues a little bit. I fast forward to show you one interesting direction. And um, black plays rook there. Uh, the interesting direction is that, for example. 
if you say that if black even plays something like that and let's say uh, you play rook there and black takes and you also for example take with whatever pawn or bishop now we are entering opposite colored bishop territory right and usually people say that opposite color bishop one or two extra pawn doesn't help yes this is a usual case but not in this case in this case there is a big difference first of all there is a rook can that can join the game and rook can kick that bishop from a3 to somewhere else and push the a pawn or if bishop wants to stay there some other piece should defend that bishop for example the rook should defend that bishop so you should uh, lose two pieces to uh, stop the a pawn from pushing forward so um, black has at least one piece at least rook that can freely play over the game and yeah this is uh, one point i wanted to make that not always opposite color bishops are bad so let's go forward to see what happened in the game in the game nothing much we can say because after a lot of maneuvers finally white and black agree to exchange one pair of the rooks at this moment and here it seems that um, white is ascending good but actually white is not doing any good but if white loses the c pawn loses the game but also white cannot move the pieces and um, there is no way he can move the piece no a good place to move the pieces white tried to say close to the to its pawns and uh, to the f1 square in particular to prevent black from for example if you were going there it was nonsense yes because bishop says check so it tries to say close to f1 square but it doesn't help because um, first black limits white's movement and then brings the king in at this position probably resigned but now uh, why resign for example what do you want to do you want to move the rook king comes in and move the rook king comes in and you lose the c pawn uh, you lose the c pawn and then you lose the game i mean um, whatever you do for example you move the rook lose the c pawn and then two pass pawns you cannot do anything against it i hope you enjoyed and Learn that not always opposite color bishops are bad. Uh, they always <laughs> don't let uh, let to draw. Also, sometimes exchange sacrifices are good, especially if you destroy pawn structure of your opponent. See you next time.